hey guys good morning um how you guys doing i haven't updated in a while mainly because i've been really busy and since school started and since i started going to a neurologist for my dystonia um i've just been really busy um you know doing exercises and all these things so but um just a quick update, uh, my dystonia is still up and down, ticks up and down um, as we speak right now. Like lately I have a lot of tension in my face and my eyes still and a lot of neck um, dystonia. So, you know, my neck will start turning and things like that. Um, like doing this and then it'll go like that. And it just kind of does all kinds of weird things if I'm not talking. So. Um, but however, um, we did a lot of interesting exercises, mainly just to incorporate my brain with my body movements again. Um, I went to several dance classes. At first I was struggling really hard. Um, but you know, as time progresses, I actually did notice me connecting with my brain a lot better or with my body movements. Um, but you know, I didn't realize how bad I got until now like um the neurologist was drawing letters on my left leg yesterday and asking me to guess and i could not feel like it just it just you know the connection from my body and stuff um it's just really disconnected there's so many things i can't feel anymore that i didn't realize until someone tells me um i want to share some exercises with you guys but i don't know if you know if he would mind me sharing because you know he did bring up like as he was talking about his practice and things like that since we had we spent so much time like i literally go there every day he was talking about he parted away with his old partners because um you know they would just copy his exercises so i was like hmm, maybe i shouldn't you know tell you guys exactly like what we we're doing because you know i don't know if that's like invading his you know so, but, you know, a lot of things we did, uh, for example, some things you guys can't do at home is um, just walking and walking backwards. So you can walk straight, walk backwards, and make sure your arms are swinging and, you know, just getting these movements. And make sure when you do these exercises, you move very slowly. Because um, I, I tend to have my anxiety makes me do things super fast, you know. And if I don't, also, I, I tremor really bad and... Um, but it's doing these exercises very slowly that you're gonna reconnect with your brain, um, these new movements. And then again, I said dancing is a huge one. Um, like for me, I, I, I dance really well doing my own things, like freestyle. But if I'm trying to copy a choreography of what someone else is doing, doing unfamiliar movements, I cannot. Ever since I was little, like I just sucked at it. And also I noticed when I move one side, if I'm dancing, like if I'm moving my right leg, technically I'm supposed to be moving my left hand, but I always go with the same like right hand. That's what I'm like. So I'm really bad at coordination from, you know, left to right or right to left. So that's something I'm working on. And um, so those are a few things that you guys can do or swimming. And um, yeah, so um, maybe I'll ask him down the line, like if it's okay, you know, if I share some of the exercise we're doing, um, just so that maybe, you know, you guys can, you know, start doing some of these things too, if you have dystonia. Um, but really what I wanted to talk about today is, um, I actually wanted to talk about this for a while now. I just haven't had a chance to, um, is ever since I had, you know, depression, anxiety, um, a movement disorder or a chronic illness, I would say, I, you know, became very, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for. Um, um, I guess empathetic or I become very more sensitive to things people say. Um, this made me wanted to put out, you know, a video for, for example, like, you know, friends or family of people that are going through these things. Um, hopefully this could be helpful to you guys and you guys, you know, can learn what to say because um, there's some things that my family say or my friends say that I'm just like, shut the fuck up, literally, like, you're not helping, you know, and it pisses me off. 
because when people don't understand and they're just adding salt to the freaking wound is like it makes me angry and um like I remember I was hanging out with my cousin and you know I love my cousin and and it's kind of sad because growing up I always thought she was my best friend we grew up together we moved to the U.S. together like our journey has been literally the same like she was my best friend I told her I told her everything and it's through this I realized that she's not very my kind of people I don't know if that makes sense um she's not very empathetic and um it just made me feel I guess this experience made me feel more connected to humans in general but also more disconnected I don't know if that makes sense I think it's just once you go through certain things it's hard to think like how you were without knowing these things I don't I don't know if that makes sense um I don't want to call it ignorant it's just lack of experience I guess um Sorry, my head just keep wanting to wobble all over the place. And um, uh, so I, I remember like her, also her husband was like, I was just telling them about, you know, things I was going through. And, and you know, of course they brush it off and that pisses me off. Because so for friends and family, if, if, I mean, first of all, her husband was also like, oh, you're too young. Like, you're too young for this. You know, he kept saying that. And I'm just like, well, no shit, dude. I know I'm too young for this. Like, do you think I don't know that? That just makes me more angry or more mad at myself that this is happening. Like, things that you, there's certain things that people don't need to say, you know, when, when, during these, these times, um, just these ignorant things. And, um, you know, if your friends or family or if you know someone that's going through, for example, depression, I think the best thing, and this goes, this applies to anything, actually. I think anything someone's going through, the best thing you can do is not be a problem solver for them. I think, and I, I used to be guilty of this because I think we are all made to solve problems. You know, our brain works this way. Solve the problem. And we can't help it when someone tells us problems and, you know, we are just automatically going to say, you know, how can I fix this? But what you fail to realize is that this person probably has gone through every single resource that they have already. You know, you telling them, for example, I hate when people tell me, oh, have you tried CBD? Have you tried smoking weed? Have you tried the, 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 try yoga, try breathing? Well, no fucking shit. You don't think I try any of these things? Like, you know, it pisses me off and it frustrates me. Um, I think, you know, that's the worst thing you can do for someone when someone is telling you I'm experiencing, you know, any, any kind of hardship. Um, don't tell them, oh, go see a therapist. They probably have already. I mean, maybe they didn't. If they didn't, great. You know, maybe ask them, hey, what have you done already? What have you tried? But don't just jump to the conclusion and tell them, oh, you should try this, you know? Because, like I said, chances are they already exhausted the resources. And that's why they're confining in you. Because they're frustrated. The best thing you can do, besides not trying to, you know, jump to the conclusion and tell them what you think they should do, is be empathetic. Really, all you need to say is, I don't really understand how it feels, but I could imagine what you're going through. Just try to put yourself in their shoes. Just try to imagine. Tell them, I don't really understand, you know, because I'm not going through this. But, you know, I, I, I'm trying to understand it. And it must be really hard for you. Just validate. Validate their feelings. I think that's probably one of the things most people want when they are telling you something. Um just to let them know that what they're feeling is not wrong. You know, they're not alone. Um, so that's two, two huge things. One, don't tell them how to solve their problem, what they should try. Two, um, you know, sorry, just a lot of tension in my head. Um, you know, validate what they feel is real. Just be empathetic. Don't say, I'm sorry. Nobody, I don't care if you're sorry or not, but... I want I, I want you to try to understand me. So be empathetic, not sympathetic. Um, number three is especially this is for people that have depression or suicidal. Hope. Give them hope. What kept me going, I remember during those really, really dark times where every day was like, you know, I couldn't see the light um, at the end of the tunnel. I was in the tunnel. Um, 
what kept me going was hope. You know, hope that things won't change. Hope that in the future, you know, things will get better. Um, just even just hoping that there's some kind of treatment down the line in 10 years. I don't know. Try to give someone that little bit of hope. Whatever it is, that's what they're going to be able to grasp onto. Especially people that are thinking about suicide. Um, hope is so powerful sometimes that people don't realize that it could keep you going and going and going. When I had anxiety, so this is the difference when I had anxiety and when I had dystonia. When I had anxiety, I never, I, I was depressed. But I never got suicidal because <clears throat> there was always hope that I will get better. And because of that, I kept going and kept going and I didn't get to where I wanted to die. But when I had dystonia, when everyone in the freaking world told me there is no cure. You have to live this for the rest of your life. And my symptoms did not get better. It was just painful, hurting. I wanted to die because I lost hope, you know, because nobody around me was telling me that there's something I can do. Um, and I had to dig, you know, in the gutters and find the hope that nobody else was giving me. I have to research and, you know, start doing these therapies and things like that. And because I needed that hope, if I don't, there's nothing I can work towards. So I think in, in these kind of situations, the best thing you can do, you know, one, don't try to give them solutions. Two, trying to feel, understand where they're coming from and validate their feelings. Three, trying to bring some kind of hope to them. Even just by saying, if, for example, in my example, for, you know, when I lost hope, you know, my friend told me, hey, like, you know, science are changing constantly. Maybe we might find something in, you know, the near future. And that's hope for me because I, I wasn't thinking there's a future. I was thinking now is permanent. What I'm going through right now would not change. And when someone trying to, you know, bring that new idea into my mind that, hey, there is a future. There is technology, sciences. People are studying these illnesses. Things could change, you know. And that brought a sense of something for me. And then, you know, you get by today and then tomorrow things change. You don't always feel the same. So just, I, I think these three things are just really, really important um, when dealing with people going through situations like this. So I, I hope, you know, this is helpful for you guys. And, um, you know, honestly, I don't have much to update as far as my dysonia and tics and things. Um, um, my tics are not showing. A lot of people ask me why my tic is not showing as much. It's because um, I'm holding in the tension in my head and in, in my body. Uh, when I do that, my tic doesn't really happen. So it's just kind of like a way of suppressing my tics. But it's not very comfortable and it's not what I want to do. Um, so, like, you know, my neck is turning and things like that and I'll turn it back. Um, this, this helps with my tic. If I just look straight and just continue to look straight and not do these dystonia movements I will take much more as you guys probably seen in the past so um but yeah <clears throat> other than that I don't have much updates uh, I'm gonna keep you know doing exercises I, I I know this is a long term sort of thing um you know it might be a year from now that I feel a little better or you know things like that but again like I said I have hope so that keeps me going and um I hope that, I keep saying hope now, I hope that, um, you know, this is helpful for you guys. Um, if you're going through it, I hope that you feel a little better because at least someone out there understands. Um, and if, if it's somebody that you know, under, you know, that's going through it, I hope this helps you understand and, and be able to approach the situation a little better. And um, I'll keep you guys updated. And uh, yeah, take care. Bye.